Hi everyone, my name is Cindy and I'm going to show you today how to make some interesting things out of wood. So let's get started. And wait a minute, if a crafter has a clean house, mm, I think there may be something wrong with their computer or their editing device. DIY number one, a DIY rustic leather handle tray. The supplies needed include two nine by five inch scrap leather for the handles, four number nine brass upholstery nails, Java chalk paint, watered down to make a stain, dishwater safe gloss Mod Podge, a hammer, 13 by three and four by five and three fourths piece of wood, paper towels and scissors. I was inspired by something I saw at Williams Sonoma that was approximately $120. I made mine for approximately $5 or less. Therefore, it is a very easy and cost effective project. I cut the piece of wood to 13 and 3 fourths inch in length and set it aside. Then I cut the leather handles from a bag that I salvaged or it might have been given to me. And you can save money by accepting free bags as you attend certain events. You may be able to use the handle or the bag. Take the bags and see what you can do with them. I cut the leather handles with scissors in half so that they would be nine and a half inches each. And you can cut them a little bit smaller so that they will look like the authentic tray. I stained the piece of wood by using some Java colored chalk paint and watering it down and use it like a stain. And I just used paper towels to stain it and the chalk stain needs to dry overnight. I determined how I wanted the handles to be placed on the ends and I took my hammer to nail the brads to each side of the handle. So there's one brad on the left and one brad on the right. After the fact, I used some dishwater safe Mod Podge to cover the top part so that I can put food on top. However, I probably would put food on a plate. And I think this is not bad for a beautiful tray. You can use it for tea, coffee, or just put candles on top. It's up to you how to style it, and you need to style it as to what pleases you. So let me know what you think about this. It is not something you, like a chakuri board that you would put a lot of things on, but it's very simple, minimalistic, and sort of industrial looking. Now, what would you make is a collaboration with the host OK at Home DIY and Connie's Workshop and DIYs. The guest host this month is Deco Easy. Now, these women can create a piece of wood into various shapes that make you wonder, how do they do that? So make sure you subscribe, like, save, and comment. Their channels are listed in the description box below. In addition, there are other collaborators that are making DIY out of wood that are awesome. Therefore, let's show everyone some love by subscribing, giving a thumbs up, and commenting on their channels. The playlist is in the description box below. It is always time for something and maybe some are late for everything and on time for some things. However, I like to be on time if I'm going somewhere. That is how my family rolled when I was a kid. In fact, I had to run to keep up with my parents sometime. So this brings me to my second DIY, a modern clock. The supplies you need include a round piece of wood, 11 by 11 by 0 0.5 inches, black, plaster, and khaki colored acrylic paint, painter's tape, 
clock movement kit, wooden numbers, that's optional, and Mod Podge. This is a modern clock with three different colors that can be used in any room. It can have numbers or just left plain. I was inspired by something I saw on Etsy. I started out by using painter's tape to divide the clock into three sections. Then I began to paint the plaster colored acrylic paint first. Then the khaki. And finally finishing it in black. Now to paint each of the sections, you need to use painter's tape to measure off where you want the different colors. Mod Podge was used to give the finishing touch. Now, if I had to do it over again, and with this one, you really can sand it down and paint it another color. But I would give the clock a good sanding first. Now, to rub my hand over the round circle, it felt smooth, but after I put the paint on, it made it a little rough. So I have to figure out how to adjust that. Next, it was time to put the clock movement kit on. I pushed the clock movement through the back and threaded it to the front and put all of the pieces, the long hand, short hand, and the minute hand. I popped a AA battery in the back and yay, started to work. I think it looks very nice and may jazz it up later with numbers. So let me know what you think. Would you add the numbers or would you leave them off? Would you put all of the numbers from 1 to 12 or would you just put 12, 3, 6, 9? Let me know. But I think it looks really nice. And this is going to go in my laundry room. DIY number three, a picture frame mirror. The supplies needed include a picture frame, and this was thrifted, molds, wood glue, mirror, plaster, colored acrylic paint, and some clay. This is another easy project, and the supplies needed again are minimal. The picture frame was thrifted, so it was already painted with plaster acrylic paint, that I had used in another project. Clay was used to make the medallion on each of the corners. And a mold was used to form the medallions in the corners. So I made four. And the way you do that, you add a little cornstarch to the mold, and then you proceed to put your clay in there to form the mold and take off the little pieces that are not need needed. You can do that before you remove it from the mold or you really could do it afterward, but uh, it's best to do it when it is still in the mold. I placed each of the medallions in the four corners and painted them with plaster chalk paint. I slipped the mirror inside the frame and you can have a sweet picture of yourself and others each morning. Now the other things that can be done is to put a mat, some glass and a pitcher inside. Um, you can put a picture that depicts the time of the year, like Easter or 4th of July, or anything that is special to you. This frame is so versatile and a little, I would say, on the shabby chic. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate all of your sweet comments. And I especially appreciate all of you who watch my videos and help me get to 1,000 subscribers. Now, the winner for accomplishing 1,000 is, so please DM me so I can send you your prize and you can claim it. So if you've liked what you've seen, please subscribe, like, save, and comment. Also, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and remember, we are shaped and fashioned by what we love. This is by Johann Wolfgang von Gothia. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.